Hi, this is Marcy Harris with Popbox, and I'm here with Charlie Mitchell, who joins us every week to talk about what's coming up in Congress and what we should be watching. He's a longtime Washington reporter and currently senior editor at Inside Washington Publishers. Uh, Charlie, thanks for joining us this week, and tell me what's going on. Some interesting moves in the House uh, with the discharge petition on the student loan bill. Right. That's right, Marcy. Um, the student loan rate, the interest rate on student loans is set to double in about a week and a half on, um, on July 1st. There have been bills passed in both the House and Senate to address that, the administration, but the two parties are at odds and the Obama administration has been weighing in and has been very critical of House Republicans. The Democratic congressional plan is to basically freeze the student loan interest rate at 3.4 percent for the next two years. That's what it is right now. Um, if there's no action, that student loan rate is going to double on July 1st to 6.8 percent. Now the Republicans have a plan, the House Republicans, that would tie it more to market rates, to a treasury bond rate. Um, it would result in an increase. Critics, largely Democratic, say that the Republican plan would result in students paying even more than they would if the interest rate automatically doubles on July 1st. Republicans say that isn't true and say that the system is broken and needs to be fixed. But the interesting thing is that the, the Obama administration proposed an idea in their budget proposal for the coming year that isn't all that dissimilar from the House Republican approach. It would tie to a Treasury bond rate. The thing is, is that the Obama plan would cap the interest rate and it would say that basically what the student got when when he or she first got the loan would be the rate that they would pay throughout the throughout the life of the loan the House Republican plan would allow that rate to be revisited every year so we're in a stalemate right now there's there's talk that there are quiet behind the scenes negotiations going on between the president's people and the House Republicans but at the same time, the House Democrats are making a procedural move called a, a discharge petition to try to force the Republican majority to bring their proposal to the House floor, their proposal to essentially freeze the rate for the next two years. What they need is to get 218 signatures on this discharge proposal. And then essentially, if they can do that, they would take control of the House floor on this issue. And, and, so you could, and just to explain, sure. this rarely happens. The, the, right. A discharge petition requires 218 signatures to essentially bypass committee and go straight to the House floor. But, I mean, right. I'm, I'm trying to remember when that's actually happened. Uh, can you remember uh, a time, Charlie? I can't remember the last time. It's been it's been many years, and it's something that, as you can imagine, the majority leadership is um, very very determined not to let these type things succeed. So um, they will put a lot of pressure on their fellow Republicans not to vote for it. I would have to think that it's a huge huge long shot that that the Democrats could win on this. They feel on the Democratic side that they succeeded on this issue last year that a lot of public pressure came to bear on Republicans and um, essentially what happened was that Republicans and Democrats agreed to freeze the current rate for another year that's what's expiring on July 1st Democrats are going for a replay on that they're they're doubling down and they want to see the same thing happen the Republicans have argued that look there's a there's a policy problem here this rate is it, it's set arbitrarily by the federal government it needs to be revisited it needs to have kind of a market system to determine what the fair ongoing rate is the president kind of agreed with that in his budget but as of right now nobody wants to be the one who's held responsible for seeing a dramatic increase in the student loan interest rate kicking in in the next couple of weeks and the clock is ticking, as you say. Uh, so what else is going on in the House this week, Charlie? The House is going to turn to the Farm Bill. That's going to be the big one for them. It's H.R. 1947, if folks want to weigh in at popvox.com. Um, there, there were a couple of big moves over the past week on this. This bill would trim about $40 billion overall over 10 years from Farm Bill spending from what would be expected otherwise and 20 billion of that comes from reductions in food stamp 
payments. That's made this very controversial. That's far, far more than the Senate has proposed. The Senate Farm Bill looks at about four billion in savings coming from um, from food stamps, and the thing is, is the conservatives in the House they want even more savings, and they feel that that the forty billion isn't sufficient. So. Speaker John Boehner has been walking kind of a tightrope on this, and it hasn't been clear of whether or not he would support the Republican version of the Farm Bill at all and whether he would bring it to the floor. But he declared late in the week that he does support it, that it has needed reforms, and that it has a lot of savings, and he's going to support it. That was considered very important because, as written, with all of these reductions, the bill probably isn't going to get a lot of support from House Democrats. So Boehner needs to be able to unite all of his Republicans around H.R. 1947 if it's going to pass. So that'll be um, something that takes up a good part of the week. The House is also getting into the abortion issue this coming week, which is always controversial. There's a bill that's going to be on the floor, H.R. 1797, and this would ban abortions after 22 weeks of pregnancy. Um, this will this has about 94 co-sponsors, I believe, all Republican coming to the floor. This is something that the, the conservative base of the Republican Party is strongly in favor of. It probably won't get very many Democratic votes at all, and it's it's unlikely in the extreme that it would be taken up in the Senate, but this is a, a chance for the House Republican leadership to allow their conservative members to weigh in on this issue. That's H.R. 1797. Well, and interestingly in that, Charlie, there were some amendments offered that would have allowed exceptions for rape or incest that did not pass, but we've now heard that right. the latest version that will be considered on the floor actually does contain language with those exceptions. That, that's right. Those exceptions were blocked when the bill went through committee by the majority on the committee, but when the bill goes to the Rules Committee, the Rules Committee is basically an extension of the majority lead. They can make changes to a bill between the time it passes committee and the time it goes to the floor. And they decided, and they haven't publicly discussed why they decided to do this, but yes, they put in those exceptions for rape and incest. So that'll be the, the um, language that comes to the floor. And we've got a link up to, to that new language on Pop Fox as people are weighing in. Uh, and then over to the Senate where they continue with immigration. Right, right. They got off to kind of a slow start on immigration last week. Um, they're hoping to really get in and start voting on a lot of amendments. They're pressing up against this July 4th deadline. The majority leader in the Senate, Harry Reid from Nevada, has said he wants to finish this on July 4th. Reid will almost always start threatening weekend work when we start heading toward a recess period. And he, lo and behold, has done it again. He has warned members that they may have to vote late at night and they may have to vote over the weekend and they may even stay in in the 4th of July week, which would be a huge headache for members of Congress, but he said he is determined to get this thing passed before senators go home for the July 4th recess. Now, what is that going to take? There, um, There is a major, major amendment pending out there by Senator Don Cornyn from Texas. He's a, a conservative Republican from Texas. Judge. He's uh, known very much as a, a law and order type guy. Um, he has criticized the version of the immigration bill that was put together by the so-called Gang of Eight bipartisan group, eight senators who negotiated a compromise and who largely pushed their version through the Senate Judiciary Committee untouched. Um, there were little tweaks to it, but it's by and large still the compromise that the Gang of Eight fashioned. Um, Cornyn has said that's unacceptable, that it doesn't do enough to ensure the border is secure and that, that illegal immigration has been curtailed before it begins the process of essentially legalizing, naturalizing the people, undocumented residents who came into the country illegally. Um, that's, that's really at the heart of this, this whole debate. What do you do with that group of 11 million people? Um, the criticism on the conservative side has been you need to really convince us that you've secured the border and there will be another 11 million people who come in illegally after this thing is enacted. Uh, um, the
the supportive side, the folks who support reform, they have said that there are all kinds of benchmarks that are included that um, have to go into effect, that, that this bill has more money for border security than we've ever seen before, number one, and number two, that people are here illegally. They don't just go to the front of the line in order to get green cards and then citizenship. They have to pay fines and they have to take other steps before they can do it. The question is, what is enough? A lot of conservatives are trying to rally around the proposal as a way to say, Listen, this is really about strengthening the border. That's our first priority before we do anything else. Well, and, and Charlie, the, the pact among this gang of eight really was that they would resist all amendments, correct? That they would they would stick to the the bill in the form that it has, has been released. So even if some of those members may agree with this court and amendment, the, the thought is that they would stick with the original bill proposal. That's right, and where they've gotten a little off track on that is from Florida, Republican from Florida, who has indicated he's supportive of this amendment, um, how anybody vote, but he has made a lot of comments with the other and they much less so. So it'll be interesting to see who breaks away. The other possibility here, which Cornyn himself raised the past couple of days, was he might agree to tinker with or, or change the Lutheran's amendment, make it more acceptable. And if he could do something that would kill the entire group of the game, then I think you would have a bill that probably would go through with over 70 votes in the Senate. But that's going to be tough. Senator Walsh so a member of the, the game, he's called Cornyn Pill. He basically said that would kill this whole process. Um, so, how do you bridge that gap? Is there a way to strengthen the border security aspects of this without creating a pathway to legalization for the 11 million people who we're talking about? Is it so long and complicated that it's essentially meaningless? Those are kind of the two polls that are debating right now. And of course, this debate is is just in the Senate and, and still a long ways to go uh, once that bill makes its way over to the House or a House version is introduced. Charlie, thank you so much for joining us this week, and uh, we will check in with you again next week as always. Thank you.